Todd Gurley's NFL career ended in November 2022 at the age of 28. And the simple reason for the end of his career is that his knee injuries became too much to deal with. Back in 2014, when his first major knee injury would occur, Todd Gurley was a junior at the University of Georgia. After rushing for 1,385 yards in his true freshman year, it became commonplace to view him as one of the top players in the upcoming 2015 NFL Draft. Various way too early mock drafts had him being a slam dunk first round pick. Now this isn't surprising when you remember that Gurley was a 4 star recruit and was rated the 5th best player in the state of North Carolina. And as a senior, he totaled 2600 yards and 38 touchdowns, winning his 3rd consecutive 2A state championship at Tarboro High School. All this got him his scholarship to the University of Georgia. It only took one game for Gurley to become the starter for the Bulldogs. In that first game, he scored two touchdowns and rushed for 100 yards. You might not remember this, but he also scored on a 100-yard kick return in the first quarter of his college career. From that time on, the Georgia coaching staff knew that this kid would be their starter until he went pro. Gurley would go on to become just the second true freshman in Bulldogs history to reach the 1,000-yard mark. The other, none other than Georgia legend Herschel Walker. During that season, Gurley was second in the SEC in rushing yards and was named All-Conference. By the time we reached his sophomore season, it was clear that he was ready to take a big step forward as one of the finest offensive weapons in the SEC. Unfortunately, this is where the first of his injury troubles would start. He went down with a sprained ankle against LSU after just 8 carries, missing in the second half. While Georgia would win that September game 44-41, they lost 2 of the next 3 games that Gurley missed. Gurley would go on to only play in 10 games that season, failing to break the 1,000-yard barrier. This wouldn't hamper Gurley's start to his junior year, as he would rush for 198 yards and 3 touchdowns in an opener against Clemson. He continued at that pace throughout the first half of the Bulldogs' season, with Gurley having 773 rushing yards in just 5 games. He was definitely on his way to the Heisman Trophy. However, Gurley would then get suspended for illegally taking money for signed memorabilia and autographs. The NCAA suspended him for the next 4 games. While this didn't end Gurley's season, it would make it so he would only play one more game in a UGA uniform. In Gurley's return versus number 9 Auburn, the Bulldogs would blow out their opponent 34-7. While this should have been a happy moment, Gurley made a huge mistake and it impacted the rest of his career. Up big in the fourth, they handed it to Gurley who went right up the middle before cutting with no one around and he would collapse after that cut. The injury? Or an ACL. He was out the rest of the season. Gurley would go on to make the decision to skip his senior year and enter the NFL Draft. Despite many people convinced Gurley would fall to the lower end of the first round because of the knee injury, it didn't happen. Surprising everyone, the St. Louis Rams took Todd Gurley with the 10th pick of the 2015 draft. While an ACL tear can immediately end someone's career, this looked to just be a minor setback as Gurley recovered from the injury faster than was expected. He only missed the first two games when most analysts thought he wouldn't play at all in 2015. Gurley saw minimal action in Week 3 against the Steelers, but everyone would forget about his unimpressive debut after what he did in Week 4 against the Cardinals. Todd Gurley would make NFL defenders look like average college players, reigniting visions of his Saturdays with the Bulldogs. And just like his college days, he would have 14 carries for 144 yards in the second half alone. Being the engine behind the Rams' win, Gurley took that momentum and ran for three more straight 100-yard games. Surprisingly, Gurley wouldn't score a touchdown until the Rams' Week 7 game versus the Browns. But afterward, Gurley would find the end zone in the next five straight games. In just 12 games his rookie year, he ran for over 1,100 yards and scored double-digit touchdowns. In his first four games as the Rams' starter, he put up more rushing yards than any running back in NFL history with 566 yards. Todd Gurley quickly rose in popularity amongst fans and his peers. In fact, Gurley was rated the 22nd best player of 2016 by other players. For the 2015-2016 season, he was one of the five rookies named a Pro Bowler, and he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. While Gurley would go on to have a disappointing second season, it was actually a godsend for the Rams franchise. Jim Fossil was out as head coach, and Sean McVay was in. In 2017, McVay fully used the explosive Gurley in every possible way. 
Gurley would have almost 800 yards receiving to go along with a second 1,000-yard rushing season with 1,305 yards and 19 total touchdowns. The Rams won 11 games behind Gurley and the ascending Cooper Cup. Gurley would become just the 8th player ever to have 1,300-plus rushing and 750-plus receiving yards in the same season. While Gurley should have won the rushing title, the Rams sat him in Week 17 versus the 49ers, allowing Kareem Hunt to pass him. However, you would have been dumb to suggest another back or skill position player was better than him that year. Todd Gurley easily took home the Offensive Player of the Year award with 74% of the vote. And with great play, usually comes great earnings. So the Rams would give Gurley a four-year, $60 million extension in July 2018. The deal made him the highest paid running back in the NFL at the time. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Or do they? To start the 2018 season, Gurley continued his insane production and the Rams were better than ever. Gurley scored in the first 11 games and was on pace to reset all of his career highs. However, the extreme workload of 300 touches a season was beginning to take a toll. He struggled in his last two regular season games that season, failing to get more than 50 rushing yards against the Bears and Eagles, before the Rams would shut him down until the playoffs. After back-to-back C.J. Anderson 100-yard rushing games to end the season, Gurley would come back to have a 16-carry, 115-yard game versus the Cowboys. What I will note is that C.J. Anderson would actually outperform Gurley in that game, but both efforts would get the Rams a 30-22 win. After a 4-carry, 10-yard game and an overtime win versus the New Orleans Saints in the conference championship game, it became apparent something was off with Gurley. In the next two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl against the Patriots, Todd Gurley was a main storyline for the Rams. No one knew how healthy he actually was. The Rams stuck to the story of inflation in his knees and that he would be healthy enough to play. Some thought he was not as badly hurt as he was, and some were being led on to think that it might be far worse. In the biggest moment of his career, though, it was clear Gurley wasn't the same offensive player he was the season prior. He struggled to do anything with the ball, and the Rams, without their most prolific player, were suffocated in a devastating 13-3 Super Bowl loss. In the offseason, it was revealed that Gurley had arthritis in his knees, a common side effect of someone with a previously torn ACL. While the previously torn ACL might have been just a snag, this looked like it could be a death sentence for Todd Gurley's career. By the time 2019 arrived, questions about Gurley's future seemed to never stop. During that season, McVeigh would continue to feed Gurley the ball, but it was clear he was no longer that same player. The five-year to carry back from the 2017 and 2018 season was gone, replaced with a player who could maybe get four yards a carry on a good day. While Gurley would start 15 games that season, the Rams were mediocre, going from the Super Bowl to a 9-7 team. From a statistical viewpoint, you might see that Gurley scored 12 touchdowns that year and rushed for 885 yards, but that doesn't tell the full story. Gurley didn't break 100 yards in a single game that year. In the footage from those games, it was clear that the cuts were no longer crisp, and what made him a dynamic player was almost completely gone. Unfortunately for the Rams, this was the player they made the highest paid running back in football, and he was barely outplaying his backup. Ultimately, with the Rams being cash strapped and coming very close to the salary cap line, there was no other choice. So on March 19th, 2020, the LA Rams released Todd Gurley. From the perspectives of other teams, there was now no risk to signing Gurley to a prove-it deal. Even if Gurley was 75% of what he was, that was still better than most starters in the league. The Falcons would be the team to take on Gurley, hoping to see his spark reignited in Atlanta. While it was clear Gurley could still help an offense put up points, rushing for 9 touchdowns in 2020, his productivity still wasn't there. At nearly 1,500 NFL touches since his ACL tear, he just wasn't a true starting quality running back anymore. His 3.8 yards per carry in his final season as a Ram continued in Atlanta, with Gurley averaging just 3.5 per carry as a Falcon. As the season ended, Gurley wasn't resigned, and there was never really any interest in signing him over the next year, leading to his retirement in November 2022. Still only 28 at the time of this video, in less than a 3 year span, Gurley showed us just how volatile the life of an NFL running back is. He went from the best weapon in football to jobless to retired in the span of four years. Since he would retire after a full year free agency in 2022, it will always be a story of what could have been, as Gurley will remain one of the most special talents we've seen and definitely one of the best running backs of the 2010s. But all it took was a bad knee to end the career of somebody who was really on a Hall of Fame trajectory.
But if you want to hear about a running back who made it all the way to Canton and retired at his prime, check out my video on Barry Sanders on screen now.